Hi fifth graders, welcome to lesson 3.10, Patterns with Decimals. The essential question for this lesson is, how can you use addition or subtraction to describe a pattern or create a sequence with decimals? Now, go ahead and open up in your GoMath workbooks to lesson 3.10, found on page 71, and let's get started. Now, we're going to start out by taking a look at question number one. And as you can see, question number one has already been completed for us. But it's a good model for how to solve problems involving patterns with decimals. Now, before we begin talking about how to solve this problem, I want to talk to you about some of the vocab words that we're going to encounter in this lesson. The first word is sequence. And what it says is, a sequence is an ordered list of numbers. The second vocab word I want to talk to you about is the word term. And it says a term is each number in a sequence. Now, you can find the pattern in a sequence by comparing one term with the next term. Now let's take a look at the steps we're going to follow to help us understand our patterns with decimals. Step number one says, look at the first few terms in the sequence. So we're going to come down here to question one, and we're going to look at the first few terms that have been given. So we have two and six tenths, 3 and 92 hundredths, and then 5 and 24 hundredths. Now, what I know is, and what I need to think about, is the sequence increasing or de decreasing from one term to the next. And what I know is, when I look at those first few terms, I see that they are increasing. And if my terms are increasing from one to the next, I know that my rule is going to involve addition, because the numbers are getting larger. So that means addition will be part of my rule. Now, step two says, write a rule that describes the pattern in the sequence. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to analyze the first few terms that are given. And what I'm going to work to do is, is I'm going to figure out what would be the difference between these terms. So I think, okay, two and six tenths plus what number would give me three and ninety-two hundredths? So in order to find that, what I would do is, I would take 2 and 6 tenths away from my 3 and 92 hundredths. And when I work that subtraction, I'm left with 1 and 32 hundredths. So what I know is, between each of my numbers in this sequence, between each of those terms, I know that we're increasing by 1 and 32 hundredths. And if I'm increasing, that means I'm adding by 1 and 32 hundredths. So that becomes my rule. To each of my terms, I am adding 1 and 32 hundredths. So in order to find the missing term, what I do is I add 5 and 24 hundredths plus my 1 and 32 hundredths, and that takes me to 6 and 56 hundredths. So I now have both my rule and I also have my unknown term. Now, let's take a look at question number two. The directions for number two say to write a rule for the sequence and then find the unknown term. Well, for question two, I'm going to look first at the terms that are given. I have 25 and 7 tenths, 24 and 1 tenth, then I have my unknown term, then I have 20 and 9 tenths, and 19 and 3 tenths. So my first question that I have to ask myself is, is my sequence, my terms, are they increasing or decreasing? And what I know is, as I look at the terms that are given in my sequence, I know that my terms are decreasing. And if my terms are decreasing, I know that part of my rule is going to be subtraction. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write down the word subtract, because once again, my terms are decreasing. They're getting smaller. Now my next step is to establish what the pattern is. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to look at the first terms that are given. I have 25 and 7 tenths and I have 24 and 1 tenth. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the difference between those two terms. So I'm going to write down 25 and 7 tenths and from that I'm going to subtract my 24 and 1 tenth, making sure that my place values are aligned. Now I'm going to start out first by subtracting the numbers in the tenths place. And I know that 7 tenths minus 1 tenth is going to leave me with 6 tenths. Now, my next step is to focus on the numbers in the 1's place. I know that 5 minus 4 is going to give me 1, so I'm going to write a 1 down in the 1's place, and let's write that 1 down. 
Now I'm going to focus on the numbers in the tens place. Well, I know that 2 minus 2 is going to leave me with 0. So my last step here is going to be to place that decimal point. And once again, my decimal point always falls between the ones and the tenths place. So I know that my pattern is, between my numbers every time, we are subtracting 1 and 6 tenths. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to go ahead and complete my rule. Because what I now know is, I am subtracting 1 and 6 tenths. And that is my rule for this sequence. Now, in order to find that missing or unknown term, what I'm going to need to do is this. I'm going to have to subtract 1 and 6 tenths from that 24 and 1 tenth. So I'm going to write that problem down over here. I've got 24 and 1 tenth, and from that I'm going to take away 1 and 6 tenths, making sure that my place values are aligned. Now, I'm going to start with the numbers in the tenths place. I have a 1 and a 6, but I know that I can't take 6 tenths away from 1 tenth, so I have to regroup. So I'm going to change that 4 into a 3, we're regrouping, and then that 1 tenth turns into 11 tenths. Well, I know that 11 tenths minus 6 tenths is going to leave me with a 5 in the tenths place, and now I'm going to focus on the numbers in the ones place. And I know that 3 minus 1 is going to give me 2. So I'm going to write down a 2 in the ones place. And then I'm going to bring down that 2 in the tens place. So what I end up with is, once I place my decimal in between the 1 and the tens, I end up with a missing term, or an unknown term, of 22 and 5 tenths. So I know that my rule is subtract 1 and 6 tenths. And using that rule, I have now found my unknown term, which is 22 and 5 tenths. Now, let's take a look at question number four. Once again, my job is to write a rule for the sequence, and then I have to find the unknown term. Well, for question number four, the first thing I want to ask myself is, when I look at the terms that are given in my sequence, are they increasing or are they decreasing? And what I notice is, when I look at the terms in my sequence, I see that they're getting larger, which means they're increasing. So what I know is, since they're increasing, part of my rule is going to be addition. So I'm going to go ahead and write down the word add, because I know that I'm going to be adding as part of my pattern. Now, my next step is to establish what that pattern is. So I'm going to once again take a look at the terms that are given. Now, since that second term is my unknown term, I'm going to focus on the terms that fall behind that unknown term. So I'm going to focus on my 6 and 75 hundredths and my 9 and 25 hundredths. And what I need to establish is this. By what number do I add 6 and 75 hundredths? That would take me to 9 and 25 hundredths. Well, in order to find that number, what I can do is I can find the difference between those two terms. So I'm going to take my 9 and 25 hundredths, and we'll just write down 9 and 25 hundredths. And from that, we're going to subtract our 6 and 75 hundredths, making sure that our place values are aligned. Now, I'm going to start in the hundredths place, and what I know is 5 hundredths minus 5 hundredths leaves me with a 0 in the hundredths place. Now I'm going to focus on the numbers that are in the tenths place. Well, I can't take 7 tenths away from 2 tenths, so I'm going to have to regroup. So I'm going to turn that 9 in the ones place into an 8, and then that 2 in the tenths place turns into 12 tenths. Well, I know that 7 subtracted from 12 is going to leave me with 5, so I have a 5 in the tenths place. And now I'm going to focus on the numbers in the ones place. And I know that 8 minus 6 is going to leave me with 2, so I'm going to write down a 2 in the ones place. My last step is to place that decimal in between my ones and my tenths. So what I know is, I know that going from one term in my pattern to the next term, what I'm doing is, is I'm adding 2 and 5 tenths, or, as an equivalent decimal, 2 and 50 hundredths. So I'm going to go ahead and complete my rule, and I'm going to say, our rule is that we're adding 2 and 5 tenths, or we can also name it 2 and 50 hundredths. Now, I'm going to use that rule, the rule that we just wrote down, to now find the unknown term in our sequence. So what I'm going to do next is this. I'm going to take that 1 and 75 hundredths, 
and to it I'm gonna, now going to add my 2 and 5 tenths, also known as 2 and 50 hundredths. So I'm going to write down my 1 and 75 hundredths, and to that I'm going to add my 2 and 50 hundredths, making sure that my place values are aligned. Now, I'm going to go ahead and start working in the hundredths place, and I know that 5 plus 0 is going to give me a 5 in the hundredths place. Now let's focus on the numbers in the tenths place. I know that 7 plus 5 is going to give me 12, so I'm going to write the 2 down, and I'm going to regroup the 1. Now let's focus on the numbers in the ones place. I know that 1 plus 2 is 3, plus that regrouped 1 is going to give me a 4, so I'm going to write down a 4 in the ones place. Now my last step is to make sure I place that decimal correctly, and I'm going to place it in between the 1 and the tenths place. So what I know is, my unknown term in this sequence turns out to be 4 and 25 hundredths. And we found that unknown term using our rule, which was add 2 and 5 tenths, or 2 and 50 hundredths. Now, let's take a look at question number 5. The directions here are a little different. For number 5, the directions say to write the first four terms of the sequence. Now, they provide us with the rule for number 5, and the rule says start at 17 and 3 tenths, and then add 9 tenths. Now, what I know is this. If my rule says start at 17 and 3 tenths, that 17 and 3 tenths becomes my first term. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to write down 17 and 3 tenths as the first term in my pattern. Now, the second part of that rule says to add 9 tenths. So what's going to happen is to complete my sequence, I'm now going to add 9 tenths. So first of all, to my 17 and 3 tenths, I'm going to add my 9 tenths, and that'll take me to the second term in my sequence. Well, when I add 9 tenths to 17 and 3 tenths, I end up with 18 and 2 tenths. So I'm going to go ahead and write down 18 and 2 tenths. Now, to find the next term in my sequence, once again, to that 18 and 2 tenths, I'm now going to add my 9 tenths. Well, when I add 9 tenths to 18 and 2 tenths, I end up with an answer of 19 and 1 tenth. Now, I need to complete my sequence. So to that 19 and 1 tenth, I'm now going to add, once again, my 9 tenths. I'm following the rule that was given. And when I add 9 tenths to 19 and 1 tenth, I end up with the answer of 20. So we have now written the first four terms in that sequence, and we have followed the rule that said start at 17 and 3 tenths, which became our first term, and then to that, our job was to add 9 tenths. So to complete that pattern, to complete the sequence, we added 9 tenths each time. Now, let's take a look at question number 6. Once again, our job is to write the first four terms of the sequence. Now, for question 6, the rule given is start at 28 and 6 tenths. Now, if I see start at 28 and 6 tenths, that means the first term in my sequence is going to be 28 and 6 tenths. So I'm going to go ahead and write that number down as the first term in my sequence. Now, the other part of the rule says subtract 3 and 1 tenths. So in order to complete my sequence from my first term, I have to now subtract 3 and 1 tenths. So I'm going to take my 28 and 6 tenths, and from that, I'm going to subtract the 3 and 1 tenths. Well, when I take 3 and 1 tenths away from 28 and 6 tenths, I end up with 25 and 5 tenths. Now, in order to find the next term in my sequence, once again, I'm going to have to subtract my 3 and 1 tenths. So when I take 3 and 1 tenths away from 25 and 5 tenths, I end up with 22 and 4 tenths. Now, to find that fourth term in my sequence, once again, I'm going to have to now subtract 3 and 1 tenths from my 22 and 4 tenths. 
And when I work that subtraction, 22 and 4 tenths minus 3 and 1 tenth leaves me with 19 and 3 tenths. So I have now used my rule, which once again was start at 28 and 6 tenths. So that was my first term. And then it said to subtract 3 and 1 tenth. So every time I subtracted 3 and 1 tenth in order to find the next term in that sequence. Now, let's take a look at question number seven. It's one of our real world problem solving questions, and number seven says the Ride It store rents bicycles. The cost is $8.50 for one hour, $13.65 for two hours, $18.80 for three hours, and $23.95 for four hours. If the pattern continues, how much will it cost Nate to rent a bike for six hours? Well, what I know after reading the problem is this. The cost is $8.50 for one hour. It's going to be $13.65 for two hours. It's $18.80 for three hours. And it's $23.95 for four hours. So what's going to happen is we have to now find how much it will cost to rent a bike for six hours. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin to write down the amounts that are given and I'm going to turn those into the terms in my sequence. So I'm going to begin by listing the dollar amounts. So I'm going to write down that 850 for one hour as my first term. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to write down $8.50 and that's going to be the first term in my sequence and that's for a one hour rental. Now the next term is going to be that $13.65 which is for a two hour rental. So I'm going to write down $13.65 and that's going to be my second term. And once again that represents a two hour rental. Now my next term is going to be the $18.80 and that's going to be for three hours. So I'm going to write down the $18.80 and that once again is for a three hour rental. Now the last term given is going to be that $23.95 for four hours. So I'm going to write down $23.95 and that represents a four hour rental. Now the problem is they want to know how much it will cost Nate to rent a bike for six hours. So I have to complete this sequence. So what I know is I have hour one, hour two, hour three, and hour four. I now have to find in this sequence, I have to find how much it would cost for the fifth hour and then also how much it would cost for the sixth hour because once again our job is to find how much it will cost to rent the bike for six hours. So what I have to do is this. I have to establish the rule for this sequence. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to look at the first few terms in my sequence and what I notice is my terms are increasing. They're getting larger. And if my terms are increasing, that means that my rule is going to involve addition. So I know that I'm going to be adding a certain amount to each of those terms. So I'm just going to write down add because I know that's going to be part of my rule. Now what I have to do is I have to determine what amount I'm adding each time. So I'm going to focus on the first two terms that are given. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the difference of those two terms. So I'm going to take my $13.65 and I'm going to subtract the $8.50 from that. So we have $13.65 $13 and from that we're going to subtract our $8.50. Now I'm going to start once again now that I know my place values are aligned. I'm going to start in the hundreds and I know that 5 minus 0 is going to leave me with a 5 in the hundreds place. Now I'm going to focus on the numbers in the tenths place. And I know that 6 minus 5 is going to leave me with a 1 in the tenths place. Now my next step is going to be to focus on the numbers in the ones place. Well I know that I can't take 8 away from 3, so I'm going to have to regroup. 
So we're going to regroup that 1 in the tens place, leaving us with nothing in the tens place. And now this 3 in the ones place becomes 13. Well, I know that 13 minus 8 is going to leave me with 5. So I have a 5 in the ones place. Now my last step in this part of the problem is to go ahead and place my decimal. And once again, I place my decimal in between the ones and the tenths place. So I now have five and fifteen hundredths. But what I'm going to do is, since we're dealing with dollar amounts, I know that what's happening is I'm going to be adding five dollars and fifteen cents. So let's go ahead and add the dollar sign. I'm adding five dollars and fifteen cents to each term in my sequence. So I'm going to go ahead and complete my rule down here, and I'm going to go ahead and write down that we're adding $5.15. Now, in order to find my six hours, which is the term that I'm trying to get to, what I'm going to have to do next is this, trying to find the six hours. To my $23.95, I'm now going to add my $5.15. And when I add $5.15, to $23.95, I get $29.10. So what I know is right now, for five hours, it costs $29.10. But I can't stop at my five hours, because my goal is to find how much it will cost to rent a bike for six hours. So what I'm going to do next is this. I'm going to go ahead and add that $5.15 to my $29.10. So we're adding $5.15. And when I add $5.15 to my $29.10, I end up with $34.25. So we're going to write down $34.25. So what I know is, in order to rent a bike for six hours, it's going to cost $34.25. And we're going to go ahead and write that number down again. It will cost $34.25. And we have established that by using the rule adding $5.15 to complete our sequence. Now, your homework questions for tonight will be to complete question number one along with question number two as well as numbers 3 through 6 found in your Go Math workbook on page 72. Don't forget, somewhere on your homework page I want you to let me know, do you feel like you're number 1 a novice, number 2 an apprentice, number 3 a practitioner, or number 4 an expert? Don't forget, your homework questions for tonight will be number 1 and number 2, as well as numbers 3 through 6 found in your Go Math workbook on page 72. I hope you have a great evening and we look forward to seeing you at school tomorrow.